I like fruit. Don't you like fruit? I like fruit. Who doesn't love a good buffet? From a Chinese smorgasbord to all-you-can-eat Las Vegas style, there's a buffet out there for everyone. However, not all buffets are created equal. Here are 10 signs you're at a bad one. Hey, just eat it. Yeah. You'll like it. Employees are never around when you need them. Waiter! Oh, waiter! If the buffet employees are harder to find than Waldo, you might be at a bad buffet. While buffets need less employees than regular restaurants, they still have to be well-staffed to function properly. The MVP of the buffet waitstaff might just be the food runner. That's the person that refills the buffet trays when they go empty. If the food runners are few and far between, then you're probably not at a very good buffet. Food runners make sure the food is always fresh and hot. Without them, the food would get cold sitting in the kitchen. Can you imagine what the Golden Corral would be like without a highly skilled team of food runners? There would be a ton of angry customers if the meatloaf and fried chicken trays were not fully stocked at all times. Some buffets will cut corners and make the food runners pull double duty. That's right, sometimes the food runners also work as chefs. If that's the case, then you're definitely at a bad buffet. A first-rate buffet will have a team of chefs and a team of food runners. If the chefs have to keep filling up the food trays, they're going to be overworked. The chefs need to focus on cooking the food and making it the best it can be. They don't have time to keep reloading the buffet trays. The standards at a buffet might not be as high as a Michelin star restaurant, but the food still has to be tasty and high quality. Every buffet needs a team of highly skilled chefs. If the head chef is more like the Swedish chef than Jacques Pepin, then you're probably at a pretty terrible buffet. The food is a mystery. Oh, you're right. This isn't chicken. This is chicken. There are a few buffet staples that everyone loves. Mashed potatoes, ribs, fried chicken, garlic shrimp, and coleslaw are a few examples that come to mind. Then there's the carving station and ice cream sundae bar. Every top-notch buffet has those. If the buffet tubs are filled with unidentifiable slop and mystery meat, then you're definitely at a bad buffet. The buffet food should look appetizing. It shouldn't look like some multiverse monster that Doctor Strange would fight. I do not believe in fairy tales. All of the food at a buffet should be labeled properly. If it's not, you should pack up and get out of there as fast as you can. If you can't tell what the food is just by looking at it, then you definitely don't want to taste it. Is that ham or, or beef? Is it chicken or fish? What in the world is in that casserole? If you find yourself asking these questions, you need to find a better buffet as soon as possible. Not every buffet is going to be as good as the ones in Las Vegas, but the food shouldn't look like prison gruel. It's better to be safe than sorry when it comes to buffets. Unidentifiable food is a surefire way to get food poisoning. The buffet has a failing grade. Clean yourself up. This might seem obvious, but cleanliness matters in the restaurant business. That applies to buffets too. No one wants to eat at a dirty buffet. Even if the dining area looks clean, there could be something nasty lurking in the kitchen. Cover your ears if you're squeamish, but some buffets are filled with rotting produce and pest infestations. If the buffet was previously featured on Kitchen Nightmares, that's a huge red flag. Most of the time, these places get shut down, but what if you're eating at a bad buffet before the health inspector has done an inspection? Your best bet is to check the buffet's history. Put on your Sherlock Holmes hat and do a bit of research. Check health department databases and sanitation records. Has the buffet been shut down in the past? Does the buffet have previous sanitation violations? If the buffet has a checkered past, you'll probably want to steer clear. The buffet owners might say they're doing a better job now, but can you really trust them? Be sure to check online reviews too. If a Yelp review says there are rats in the kitchen, then there probably are. Rats! We're not living in the Pixar universe. This isn't Ratatouille. You wouldn't want to eat at a buffet with a rat infestation. Customers usually don't voice their displeasure unless they have a reason to. Trust customer reviews. They can be a lifesaver. It's part restaurant, part buffet. Sit down or buffet. Truly exceptional buffets operate seven days a week. If the buffet is only open on weekends, you're not going to have a good time. You're better off grabbing a quick bite to eat at McDonald's or Wendy's. Some buffets operate as normal restaurants during the week and switch to buffet mode on the weekend. This might not seem like a big deal, but if a buffet does this, it's usually a scam. Don't you see what's going on here? The buffet's rigged. You see, this is how restaurants unload unsold food. If it doesn't sell during the week, some restaurants will try and force the soon-to-expire food on unsuspecting buffet patrons. Don't worry, you won't catch Sizzler or Shoney's pulling a stunt like this. 
Shoney's has been in business since 1947, so you know the restaurant has a stellar reputation. The same goes for Sizzler, which opened in 1958, when Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo hit the big screen. You can rest easy knowing that both Sizzler and Shoney's operate throughout the week and only serve fresh food. It's the smaller buffets that try and get away with this scam. If you don't want to be duped into eating food that's on the verge of spoiling, then you should avoid restaurants that masquerade as buffets on the weekend. The sneeze guards are mysteriously missing. You have to lean under it to get salad or sneeze on stuff. A buffet without sneeze guards is like a car without seatbelts. Seriously, if you walk into a buffet and notice that there are no sneeze guards, you should hightail it out of there. Sneeze guards, also known as food shields, protect both the food and the customers. They're even more important in this day and age thanks to the global pandemic. Sneeze guards not only protect the food from droplets of saliva and mucus, but they also guard against hair, skin particles, dirt, and a whole host of creepy crawlers. Tastes like chicken. Unless you're Timon or Pumbaa, you probably don't want a bug in your mashed potatoes. There's nothing worse than finding a hair in your peach cobbler. If a buffet has sneeze guards, that's probably not going to happen. Sneeze guards have been around since the 1950s, and even back then, most buffets were required to have them by law. Today, regulations for sneeze guards vary based on where you live. Cities, states, and countries have different standards for sneeze guards. According to the National Sanitation Foundation, the gap between the bottom of the sneeze guards and a counter or serving tray should be no larger than 13 inches. So, be sure to avoid buffets where the sneeze guards are small with huge gaps. The tubs are too big. Not too big. Have you ever heard the expression, less is more? Normally, more food is better at a buffet, but the best buffets don't go overboard. Bad buffets have no qualms about overloading the serving trays and tubs, but that's generally not a good idea. All I'm worried about is whether to have chocolate on my cheesecake. Tubs that are overflowing may look good and attract more customers, but they may pose a health risk. Buffet serving trays should never be too deep. Shallow dishes are actually the best at keeping hot food hot and the cold food cold. It's harder to keep food at the proper temperature for an extended period of time if the serving tubs are too big. Smaller trays mean the buffet will have to hire more employees, but that's a small price to pay for happy customers. The buffet is short on utensils and plates. Give me the plate, give me the plate. The best buffets offer customers plenty of plates and utensils. They also have very strict rules when it comes to how often the utensils and plates are replaced. If you keep heading back to the buffet line with the same plate and fork, you're putting everyone at risk of contamination. If the tongs touch your dirty plate and then go back into the tray, you've just spread your germs to every customer behind you in line. That's why clean plates are so important. Here's your new plate, Grandpa. Oh boy! There's crumbs on it! If there are no tongs available, some customers will even use dirty forks and spoons to put new food on their plates. That's even worse! A good buffet will offer you a new plate and new utensils each time you head back to the buffet line. Sometimes servers come to your table with new plates and utensils, while other times clean plates and utensils are kept stacked in piles at the front of the buffet line. We hate to break it to you, but if neither option is available, you're at a bad buffet. There aren't any actual rules for how often the plates and utensils should be changed at buffets, but stellar buffet owners will take it upon themselves to have plates and cutlery changed often. Excellent buffet owners will also replace the tongs on a regular basis, and not just when they fall on the floor. Some of the worst buffet owners won't even replace the tongs even if they fall on the floor. So if you hear a horror story like that, avoid the buffet at all costs. The servers are slow. Nice to see you. Waiters who work at buffet restaurants usually have it easier than servers at full service restaurants. But it's not like they just get to sit around and do nothing. They still have plenty of important tasks. Buffet servers have to refill drinks and clear dirty plates. They also have to bring you clean plates so you can head back to the buffet line for seconds. If you're at a bad buffet, you might have to wait a long time for a coffee refill. What, what the is? The best buffets have excellent servers who are friendly and helpful. The wait staff should be coming by your table every 10 to 15 minutes. If you're at a bad buffet, you're probably gonna have a pile of dirty dishes on your table and an empty water glass. Who wants to sit around for 25 minutes waiting for more Pepsi? If that's the case, make a vow to never return. The selection of foods is poor. So the, is that it? The best buffets offer a fantastic selection of foods without sacrificing quality. 
If you're at a buffet that only offers 10 subpar items, you're definitely not getting a good deal. The worst buffets have a poor selection of terrible foods. Here's a helpful tip for all you buffet lovers out there. Avoid the all-you-can-eat sushi buffets. They're usually terrible deals. Sushi is perhaps the one food that just doesn't work in a buffet setting. Many sushi buffets only offer salmon and tuna sashimi, a few different types of nigiri, and a poor selection of rolls. You're definitely not going to get the same selection you would get at a sit-down sushi restaurant. Conveyor belt sushi restaurants offer a better selection than sushi buffets as well. Uh, sure, cheap sushi can be good if you're in Japan. In the West, that's usually not the case, especially when it comes to buffets. The sushi you find at most buffets is usually pre-made with sushi molds. It's a cheap and fast way to make sushi, but the results are usually awful. The best sushi is made fresh by an experienced sushi master. Unfortunately, you're simply not going to find an experienced sushi master working at a buffet. Another thing you need to watch out for is bacteria. Raw fish that has been sitting out for a long time is a breeding ground for bacteria. You're not going to get food poisoning eating omakase sushi in New York or Los Angeles, but you might get extremely sick eating it from some random all-you-can-eat sushi buffet. The buffet is too expensive. It's expensive and we don't have money. Normally, buffets are affordable, but sometimes they can be a real ripoff. When it comes to price, the actual dollar amount doesn't really matter that much. The question you must ask yourself is, will this buffet be a good bang for my buck? That expensive Las Vegas buffet might actually be a better deal than a $10 Chinese food buffet. If you eat $100 worth of luxurious food at an $80 Las Vegas buffet, then you got yourself a great deal. You're probably thinking, wait a minute, no buffet cost 80 bucks? Well, you obviously haven't been to the Bacchanal buffet at Caesars Palace. For $79.99, you can stuff your face with cured meats, desserts topped with gold leaf, crab legs, prime rib, mini churros, ceviche, mussels, and much, much more. Sounds like a much better deal than paying $10 for unlimited orange chicken, doesn't it? Yes! Yes! The Bacchanal Buffet might be a good deal, but higher price doesn't always mean higher quality. You have to judge for yourself. Check reviews beforehand to see if the price is worth it. A $20 all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue buffet could be a fantastic deal, as long as you don't fill up with rice. Fill up on more great videos. Just tap or click. And smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell.